to study smarter and not harder is such a tempting concept. We all want to retain the same information as other people do, but with less time. I think we are all searching for ways to reduce the time spent on revision while still achieving the same results. So in today's video, I'll give you a few tips on how you can do that. Hey guys, Victoria here and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be on the ways that you can study smarter and not harder. Let's get right into it. My first tip is to understand, not memorize. I think especially for subjects like biology, understanding really is the key. Because when you understand, everything is interrelated and you can use less brain power to retain the same amount of information. For example, for history from 4, chapter 4 is on Kemuncolan Islam dan Perkembangannya di Mekah. And to tackle this chapter, you need to understand the story. What I suggest is to read the entire chapter once without feeling the need to memorize anything. So you're just reading it as a story. And it is a story of how there was one group of gangsters called Arab Jahiliya and they did the things which all gangsters do. They got drunk, they gamble, and they robbed. They even buried female babies because apparently it affects their dignity. So their god sent Nabi Muhammad in order to tame these people and to set some rules and stuff. And this is basically just the story of how Nabi Muhammad faced some obstacles and how he overcame them with the help of his friends and family. So when you understand this, you can tackle any essay questions at all from this chapter. My second tip is to revise in a variety of ways. You don't always have to stick to your textbook. Sure, for the first time, you have to read your most reliable source. The source that you trust the most, you have to read that for the first time. But when you review it for the second time, you can use different sources. You can use your class notes, your tuition notes, your reference books. You can refer to the internet. You can watch YouTube videos. You can teach someone. You can ask someone to explain it to you. You can create a mind map. You can do practice questions. There are so many options when it comes to revision. It is not confined to using the textbook only. And if you hate reading, then you can find some friends who also hate reading. And you all can take a chapter each. So you are going to read this chapter, another friend is going to read another chapter. And once you're done, you can have a group discussion and you can teach each other the chapter. So that is one way as well. Studying may be boring sometimes, but there are ways to make it better. My third tip is to sit at the front of the class. So I always like to sit at the front of the class due to bad eyesight. But also because I think I can focus better that way. And studies have actually shown that those who sit at the front of the class got higher test scores compared to those who didn't. So according to a research, these are the percentage that the students got based on the positions that they sat in the class. So where you sit in class is not always up to you. But when you do have the choice, choose to sit in front. For example, if you are in uni and you go to lectures, then where you sit is entirely up to you. If it is up to you, then make the choice to sit at the front of the class because studies have shown that those who sit in front get higher grades. The fourth tip is to focus on the process and not on the outcome. So we have two types of goals. We have learning goals and we have performance goals. So performance goals are the goals that you set for yourself for a test. Let's say you want to get an A in admits, that is a performance goal. Learning goals are the goals that you set for yourself as you are learning and revising. So for example, a learning goal might be that you want to finish five questions of admits per day on your own. So that is your learning goal. Of course, both types of goals are essential and important. But learning goals can keep you more motivated and know that when you achieve each learning goal, it's taking you one step closer to your performance goals. Always set small learning goals for yourself. For example, you want to learn the entire blood circulatory system today. And once you achieve this learning goal, it's actually taking you one step closer to your performance goals, which is maybe to get an A plus in biology. My fifth tip is to question everything. So, for example, when you are learning something in biology, you come across a term that you don't know, then Google is your best friend. Just Google it up, try to get the meaning of that term. And when you are searching for that meaning of the term, maybe in the explanation itself, that is something that you don't really know, then you have to search again and 
just clear your doubts just keep asking questions and keep answering them by doing this you are not only making sure that you understand the material better you are also actually improving your memory as well so keep asking questions because that is the way that we learn my sixth tip is to apply what you already know to what you are learning at the moment so one example is from biology there is a feedback system that actually regulates and maintains our body temperature so how can you remember this feedback mechanism because the entire thing is actually a very common SPM essay question for biology so the way that you have to remember this is you have to apply what you already know to what you are learning for example when the body temperature rises the hypothalamus actually activates cooling mechanisms and a few things happen so how to remember these few things well you have to relate what you know so when you feel hot obviously you sweat so to put it in a sentence which will get you a point, you have to write that sweat glands secrete sweat. And the next thing is that for some people, when they feel hot, when they're under the sun, their cheeks actually um, turn red, so it looks like they're blushing. And the reason is because blood vessels dilate when we're hot. So that is another sentence which will give you one point. Blood vessels dilate and blood flows closer to the skin. And this is the way that heat is lost. When blood flows closer to the skin, it can be lost off the surface easily. Try to relate what you and your friends are experiencing every day and try to incorporate it. It can improve your memory so much better and that is just one way to use the memory trick. There are so many ways out there, you just have to recognize it by your own and try to apply what you already know to what you are learning. My last tip is to explain or to try to explain what you have learned to someone. It doesn't even have to be someone who is studying the same thing as you. It just has to be someone who is willing to listen. So I remember this one time when I was in Form 3 and we learned about how Malacca is occupied by Portuguese. And there were three Gs, so we have Gospel, Glory and also God. And I found it to be very interesting and one day I just told my mom the story of how Portuguese occupied Malacca. And once I finished telling that story, I realized that I could remember the entire chapter because that is the reason why I could recall what happened. So I definitely think that explaining a concept or a story to someone is a very useful tool in order to fill in the gaps in your knowledge and to know how much information you are retaining. So those are the seven ways to study smarter and not harder. I hope that this video has been useful. If it has been, then remember to give it a like. That's all for today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.